Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at what are reversible reactions, an analogy for dynamic equilibrium, the position of equilibrium, features of dynamic equilibrium, changing the position of equilibrium, looking at changing temperature, concentration, pressure, the presence of a catalyst, an exam style question, and finally a summary. So let's begin by discussing what are reversible reactions. Well, you may well have met reversible reactions before, and they are represented with this symbol here, with two half arrows facing in different directions. This sign is used to represent the fact that the reaction is at equilibrium. Although nothing appears to be happening, the system is actually constantly moving. It is dynamic. And a reversible reaction is only completely dynamic when it's isolated. What we mean by that is nothing is put in or taken out of the system. It's a completely closed system and that's an important point. So let's take a look at an analogy of dynamic equilibrium so we can have a better understanding of what exactly it is. Well, if you're to hang your washing out to dry on the line and then say it begins to rain, well, the rate at which your clothes are drying off and the rate at which they're getting wet are the same. This is an equilibrium. Although the system is constantly moving, your clothes are constantly getting wet and they are constantly drying. The rate at which they're both occurring is equal and overall nothing appears to be happening. So now we've looked at what exactly our dynamic equilibrium is, let's take a look at the specific features of dynamic equilibrium. So in our dynamic equilibrium, at the same time, our reactants are being converted into products, as is shown by our forwards arrow, and our products are being converted into reactants, as is shown by this backwards arrow. Now our chemical system is truly in dynamic equilibrium when the concentration of our reactants and product is constant. Now that's not to say that the concentration of reactants and products must be equal. They can be different, they just must be constant. In our system, the rate of forward reaction must also be the same as the rate of the reverse reaction or the backwards reaction. So now we've taken a look at the features of our dynamic equilibrium. Let's take a look at the position of the equilibrium. Well, what is the position? The position of the equilibrium is the extent of the reaction. So it can lie close to the reactants or the product. So how do we change the position of the equilibrium? Well, Le Chatelier's principle, an important principle, states that when a system in dynamic equilibrium is subjected to change, the position of the equilibrium will shift to minimise the change. So our system will move to minimise any change to the position of equilibrium. It will move to carry out either the forward or the reverse reaction more. And we can alter the position of the equilibrium by manipulating this, by changing things such as the temperature, the concentration of either the reactants or the products, the pressure, but only in reactions which involve gases. So let's take a look at each of these factors and see how exactly it changes the position of our equilibrium. If we begin by looking at how we can change the temperature. The effect of change in temperature on the position of our equilibrium depends on the enthalpy of our reaction. If we take a look at this reaction here, this is likely a familiar reaction. It's the reaction involved in the Haber process and we're forming ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. You can see we have one mole of nitrogen reacting with three moles of hydrogen to form two moles of ammonia. Now we can see that the forwards reaction has an enthalpy of minus 92 kilojoules per mole. The forwards reaction is exothermic as delta H is negative. Therefore, the backwards reaction represented by this blue arrow, where nitrogen and hydrogen are formed from ammonia, is going to be the opposite. It's endothermic and delta H will be positive. Delta H will take a value of plus 92 kilojoules per mole. Now, increasing the temperature will cause the system to move to oppose this change. If we increase the temperature, the system will move in the endothermic direction. In this case, it will move to the left. If we take a look at our reaction, we can indeed see that the endothermic direction is to the left. If the temperature is increased, the system will move in this direction. So now let's have a look at how the position of the equilibrium can be altered by changing concentration. 
A change in the concentration of either our products or reactants will cause a change in the position of our equilibrium. Increasing the concentration of a reactant or product causes the equilibrium to shift to oppose this change. It will shift to decrease this concentration. So, if we were to increase the concentration of our product, the system would move towards the reactants. If we were to increase the concentration of our reactants, the system would move towards the product. So, let's take a look now at how changing the pressure of our reaction can change the position of equilibrium. As I briefly mentioned before, changing the pressure of a system will only change the position of the equilibrium of the reaction when we're working with gases. Now, increasing the pressure of the system will cause it to move to the side with the fewest moles of gases. It's trying to minimize the change. So it's going to move to the side with the fewest moles of gases. Conversely, decreasing the pressure of the system will cause it to move to the side with the greatest moles of gases. So again, we have this familiar equation here. We have our nitrogen and hydrogen forming ammonia. Now we can see on the left hand side of our equation, we have one plus three moles. That's a total of four moles of gases on the left. Whereas on the right hand side, we only have two moles. Now, if we were to increase the pressure of this system, what we'd see is the system would move to the side with the fewest moles of gases. In this case, the system would move to the right-hand side, as the right-hand side has only two moles, whereas the left has four. Finally, let's take a look at the effect of adding a catalyst. Now, adding a catalyst does not change the position of the equilibrium. The equilibrium does not move to the left or to the right. Rather, a catalyst increases the rate of forwards and backwards reactions equally. It will increase the rate at which equilibrium is established, but does not alter the position of the equilibrium. Question 1. State Le Chatelier's principle. Now, you should be very familiar with Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle states that the position of our dynamic equilibrium will shift to minimise any changes applied to our system. So let's see how we can answer this question to get us our one mark. I've explained that the position of dynamic equilibrium shifts to minimise any change to the system, getting us our one mark. Now if we move on to part B. Methanol, CH3OH, is often known as wood alcohol, as is previously produced by the destructive distillation of wood. Methanol can now be manufactured through the reaction of carbon dioxide and hydrogen, according to the reaction below. Explain in terms of Le Chatelier's principle the effect of increasing the temperature. So, you may be familiar with methanol, but not necessarily the methods in which it's produced. We can select the key information in this question, which is that we are looking at the reaction of carbon dioxide and hydrogen to form our methanol, and we're given the reaction here. We are asked to explain in terms of Le Chatelier's principle the effect of increasing the temperature. We can see that the forward reaction is exothermic, as delta H takes a value of minus 49 kilojoules per mole. So, our forwards reaction is exothermic, and therefore, if we increase the temperature, the system will shift to the endothermic side, which will be our backwards reaction. So, if we were to increase the temperature, the system would move to the left and therefore we'd have a lower yield of methanol. So for two marks, let's see how we'd answer this question. I've explained that as the forward reaction is exothermic, when the temperature is increased, the system will move to the endothermic side, the left, and therefore the yield of methanol decreases. This question holds two marks. First comes from identifying how this change in temperature will affect our system and the second for relating that back to the yield of methanol. So let's take a look at question two together. In the process of making sulfuric acid, sulfur dioxide and oxygen are reacted together to make sulfur trioxide and you can see that reaction here. In industry, the following reaction conditions are used. We've got 450 degrees Celsius, three atmospheres pressure, and a vanadium oxide catalyst. These conditions ensure the position of equilibrium is almost completely to the right, thus favouring the production of sulphur trioxide. 
A chemist carries out the reaction in industrial conditions, but does not include the vanadium oxide catalyst. Explain the impact of the catalyst would have on, firstly, the position of equilibrium. Now we know that catalysts have no impact on the position of equilibrium. The catalyst increases the rate of forwards and backwards reaction equally. We get one mark for explaining that there's no effect of our catalyst on the position of equilibrium and the second for explaining why. Moving on to part B, we're asked what is the effect that the catalyst would have on the rate of reaction? Well, we know that the catalyst increases the rate of reaction and it does this by providing an alternative reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. So again, we receive one mark for stating the effect and a second for explaining it. So moving on to part B, according to Le Chatelier's principle, what would happen to the position of equilibrium if, firstly, the pressure was increased? So if we go back and review the equation that we're working with, we can see that on the left hand side we have three moles of gas, whereas on the right we have two. There are more moles of gas on the left hand side. If the pressure is increased, the equilibrium would shift to the right hand side where there are fewer moles of gas. So let's go ahead and write that in. Here we get one mark for explaining there are more moles of gas on the left hand side and a second for explaining that increasing the pressure would shift the equilibrium to the right hand side. Part 2 asks us what would happen if the temperature is increased. Again if we go and have a look at our reaction we can see that our reaction is an exothermic reaction. So increasing the temperature will shift the equilibrium to the left. So let's go ahead and write that in as our answer. Here we get one mark for explaining the reaction as exothermic and a second for justifying that therefore when the temperature is increased, the equilibrium will shift to the left. Moving on to part C. We're told that in industry, very high temperatures are often used to carry out exothermic reactions. Why is this? Although it seems counterintuitive, the high temperatures will increase the rate of reaction. And this is exactly why getting us that one mark. Questions like these can be a little bit tricky. You need to relate what you know and what you understand about the basic principles and apply them to the question in front of you. Although it might seem a bit counterintuitive to use high temperatures with reactions that are exothermic, it's important for us to think around the question and think why those high temperatures might be useful. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap provide smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.